Okay, hi everyone. Let's work through problem 2-3a, which involves preparing and posting general journal entries, and then preparing a trial balance. Candice Linnell opens a computer consulting business called Viva Consultants and completes the following transactions in its first month of operation. Okay, now, I just read that paragraph there, and then we'll go through the transactions. On April 1st, Linnell invests 80,000 cash along with office equipment valued at 26,000 in the business in exchange for its common stock. If I jump over to this page, we'll record that in the general journal. So on April 1st, I'm going to slide this down, and what we see is the increase in cash and office equipment and a credit to common stock. Okay, then on April 2nd, prepaid 9,000 cash for 12 months rent for office space. And the hint is to debit prepaid rent for 9,000. So they're telling us that we're recording prepaid rent, recording it as the asset for the full 9,000 with a credit to cash. Okay, on April 3rd, we make credit purchases for 8,000 in office equipment and 36 in office supplies. And payment is required in 10 days. All right, so what we've got to do is record the office equipment, which is an increase in an asset. So we show that as a debit of 8000 We also show the office supplies, another asset account for 3600 Only this time, instead of crediting cash, we're going to credit an account called Accounts Payable, which represents our obligation at this point in time to pay others that provided either goods or services in the ordinary course of business. Okay, then on the 6th, we completed services for a client and immediately received 4000 in cash. So what we need to do now is debit the 4000 in cash because that increases cash and show the service revenue of 4000 because the normal balance for revenue is a credit and every credit increases the revenue account. All right, what's next? We complete a 6000 project for a client who must pay within... 30 days. Okay, well, we debit an account called Accounts Receivable, which represents um, what is owed to us from our customers when we've, when we've provided goods or services for them on open account, which means they can pay for those goods at a later point. So we credit service revenue. All right, let's slide, let's look at the next one. We're on number thir uh, on April 13th, paid 11,600 cash to settle the accounts payable created on April 3rd. So 11.6 was paid, uh, which was the total amount that we made on credit purchases on the 3rd. Okay, so now I think I've got to slide this down a little bit. And why don't we slide a little bit more? So I won't have to slide in another minute or two. Then I'll bring this down and we'll see that we debit accounts payable, reducing it now. Up here you saw we credited it, establishing the obligation. Now we're paying it down by debiting it because accounts payable normally has a credit balance. So a debit reduces it. And then we credit cash to show that we have made that payment. All right, on the 19th we paid 2400 cash for the premium on a 12-month insurance policy. And they tell us to debit prepaid insurance for the full amount. So with that in mind, let me slide on down here. Let me slide down a little bit more. With that in mind, we've got uh, a debit of prepaid insurance at $2,400 and a credit to cash. Then on, on the 22nd, we received $4,400 cash as, part, as partial payment for the work completed on April 9th. So on April 9th, we're going to get some of, here's the transaction, we're going to collect some of it. So what we should see is a debit to cash for $4,400 and a credit to accounts receivable for 4400 Okay, then on April 25th, we completed work for another client for 2890 on credit. Now, this should be familiar at this point because we've had a transaction like this before. We debit accounts receivable for that dollar amount, 2890 and credit service revenue again. Now, April 28th, we paid 5500 cash for dividends. Okay, let me slide this down. And we show the dividends, 5,500 are debited. Dividends is normally a debit balance. We credit cash of 5,500. 
All right. Now, on the 29th, we purchase $600 of additional office supplies on credit. Well, if we purchase it on credit, we're expecting a credit to accounts payable because we're going to have to pay for it at a later point. And the debit is to office supplies. Then on April 30th, we pay 435 cash for this month's utility bill. And that's our last transaction. We debit the utilities expense account and credit in cash. Okay, now I'm moving to requirement three, where we're asked to prepare a trial balance. And to do this, you've got to go through all the transactions that were provided up here and figure out what the balances are. So uh, let's start out with like the first account. The cash account, we came up with a balance of 59465 Well, how did we come up with that? What we did is we added all the debits. So we added 80000 plus 4000 then we backed off all the credits, so we subtract out 9000 then we subtract out 11600 then 2400 then we add in another 4400 for that debit there, and so on, until we come up with the balance, and it's 59465 And we do that on all the other accounts. We wound up with accounts receivable of a balance of 4490 Well, how did we get that? Um, we had a debit of 6000 here. Then a debit of eleven thousand six hundred. Oh, I'm sorry, that's accounts payable. Um, then we had a credit of four thousand four hundred, another debit of twenty eight ninety. So if we add the two debits and subtract the credits, um, we wind up with four thousand four hundred ninety. Okay, we do this for every account, and when we do that, you will wind up with the balances in the account, and a trial balance proves those balance, the total debits should equal the total credits. If they don't, you've made a math error somewhere, or perhaps you've made an entry above. Okay, and that's what I wanted to illustrate on this problem. Thanks, everyone.